a student sent me this problem online to go ahead and solve. And I thought it was pretty interesting. So I decided to make a video on it to help them. And hopefully my explanation of me working through this problem can help you as well. All right, so the first question they said is, go ahead and identify the list of possible rational zeros for this polynomial. Well, unfortunately, the rational zero test, which we say is like the plus or minus the factors of your P over your Q, is only going to work when we actually have a P, meaning we have a constant. So if I had like a polynomial, let's say like a Q, X to the fourth, dot, 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 and then P, P represents our constant, right? So you're gonna take the factors of your P and put them over the factors of your Q, which is the coefficient of your leading term. And again, you have to do plus or minus. When you don't have a P, we cannot verify or confirm that we're going to, what are actually going to be the rational zeros. So unfortunately, we cannot compute the rational zeros on this. So question number, or part number one is we can't create a list via the rational zero test. Now, part number two, it says, let x equal two be a zero. All right, now let x equals two be a zero, find all the remaining zeros. So the best thing about having a zero that we know, or having a zero that we know is a zero of the polynomial, is we can use division to find the remaining factors. And once we know what a factor is, right, all we simply need to do for that factor is set it equal to zero to find the remaining zeros. So let's go ahead and apply synthetic division, to see if we can find the remaining factors. I'm going to, well, I'm gonna use synthetic division because I don't wanna use long division. Nobody wants to use long division, right? Especially on a polynomial like this. So to use synthetic division, you take your zero, put it on the outside, your synthetic division bar, and then you're simply just gonna take the coefficients of your polynomial. Here, so I have a negative one, negative three, 22, and a negative 24. Now to apply the synthetic division algorithm, remember the first term is always a freebie, so we bring that one down. And then we just continue on multiplying on the diagonal, adding on the vertical. Negative one times two is a negative two, Negative three plus negative two is a negative five. Negative two times two is a negative 10. 12 plus 22, 12 plus a negative 10 is a positive 12. 12 times two is going to be a 24. Now, if it says X is a zero, then you know you have to have a remainder of zero for via division. If you do not get zero, then either X equals two is not a zero, your teacher or your test lied to you, or more likely you made a mistake. Notice how when I did synthetic division, I said everything out loud. I could do this much quicker right? Much quicker in my head. But how many times have I made mistakes doing that really quickly and not saying the things in my head? More times than I can probably count. So it's important, even though you probably are comfortable with synthetic division, just take things slow. And again, there's always a great way to check if you did it work, did, did it right, is you know you're going to get a zero there as a remainder when you're given a zero. Okay, now what do these numbers represent? Well, this represents my remainder, which we know is zero. This represents the constant. This represents my coefficient on my linear term. This represents the coefficient of my quadratic term. So remember, this is a factor, right? So we know to find the remaining zeros, we set our factor equal to zero. Now, I always like to look to, to factoring before I try doing completing the square or quadratic formula. And if I factored out a negative here, I would have a negative 12. That means that my factors of 12 I would be looking for a difference that would give me a positive five. Well, the factors of 12 are two and six, 12 and one, and four and three. None of those have a difference of five, so therefore I can already determine that this is not factorable. So to solve this, I'm gonna to have to use the quadratic formula. All right, now please hopefully you remember opposite of b plus or minus square root of b squared minus four times a times c all over two times a, right? And I know you didn't forget that, you got this. Okay, so now we just need to simplify it. But I know like once we get to this and I remember teaching and I'd be like, tell students like, oh yeah, just go and use a quadratic format. And students are like, I don't remember that. We haven't done that since algebra one or algebra two. It's so helpful to make sure that you have that in your toolbox, like in your hip, ready to go. So don't get weak on those essential skills. All right, so we have five, remember it's opposite, so that's, it's already negative, so that's why I did positive. And plus or minus, let's see here. So that's gonna be a 25. Negative four times negative one is a positive four. Four times 12, 12, 24 is going to be a 48. Divided by a negative two, 25 plus 48, well, two plus five, two plus four is six. Five plus eight is 13, so that's gonna be a 73. So I have a five plus or minus the square root of 73 divided by negative two, so x equals those two solutions, and x equals two, that is all the remaining zeros.